I don't know if I can uh, tell you right now if that's a good decision or not, but here we go! 2-1, Bonaventura! But in the end, we get the three points and we remain flawless in Europe. Rafinha makes it five. Unbelievable. Absolutely unreal. This is going to make headlines in the football world. Suso makes it 7-0 and there is no point in celebrating anymore. Hey guys, and welcome back to the AC Milan career mode. We have a very, very important episode ahead of us, but before we get into that, I want to thank you for the support on this series. The last episode nearly made it to 200 likes. I think we're about five likes short on the last two episodes, but that's fair enough. I really want to upload more consistently. I don't think I deserve the rewards of your guys' appreciations. I've not been doing well enough, and I'm going to try and make amends this week. A couple of episodes, hopefully at least three in the next week, are coming your way. But today's episode features the game uh, Inter, of course, Derby della Madonnina. Huge game. Guimarães in the Europa League, Genoa and Chievo as well. The Chievo and Inter game will be played. Guimarães and Genoa will be simulated. So... Things could go very wrong quickly, or they could keep on going like they have been, like in a past episode where we smashed Roma 7-0, which was a huge result to boost our confidence and our place in the standing. Still six points behind Inter. It's absolutely pivotal that we pick up three points. In Derby games, anything can happen, but Inter must be looking at this one a bit anxiously and knowing that we just smashed Roma who are a good side 7-0. I'd say, despite the league standings, we could be the favourites here today. That little smile on Bonucci's face just oozes me with confidence. Inter don't know what's going to hit them. Borja Valero, Inter Mauro Icardi, Ivan Perisic. They've got a lot of uh, attacking talent. I'm not going to lie, the mini-map is not helping me because both teams are indicated with black circles. So that is not helpful at all. As Suso breaks away against Dalbert, lovely turn, Suso, good ball, Bonaventura, saved by Padelli. Valero, Valero, that's too easy there, Valero, just wide. Andre Silva into Bonaventura, Bonaventura into Rodriguez, space for Ricardo Rodriguez, Joao Mario trying to track back Rodriguez with the left foot, it's not a bad one, Suso with an acrobatic header attempt, but unfortunately saved again, here is Suso for the, oh, penalty, how is that not given? Riccardi against Bonucci, 1-on-1, -on -one. lovely switch into Candreva, Romagnoli is there, well defended Milan. Rafinha, the playmaker today for us, Kessier, good ball into Rodriguez, Rodriguez back into the middle, Bonaventura into Suso, Suso into Lucas Biglia and Inter, very strong defensively, not leaving many gaps, but here is Ricardo Rodriguez, first time banger, oh you have to be kidding me, Andre Silva, yes, 1-0 Milan. Andre Silva scores on the rebound, but what a finish that was. Despite it being an open net, that took quality from Silva to finish that. The scissor kick into the back of the net. Padelli has done phenomenally well so far, but that one was just one too many. Into the back of the net he goes. Andre Silva opens the score in the Derby della Madonnina. Fantastic start for Milan. Mauro Icardi is going to take the shot. Donnarumma comfortable. And as you can see by the halftime stats, the first half is telling a story that Milan has been in control of this game. In the chances and the possession, Donnarumma has not been worked that heavily. Padelli, on the other hand, has had to make some phenomenal saves. Only really two shots inside the box for Inter, whereas we've had four from very good areas. So uh, Padelli is keeping Inter in the game at the moment. Hopefully in the second half, we can wrap it up and get a second and walk away with this. Bonucci, lovely ball into Suso, Suso into Rafinha, Rafinha turns inside nicely, back into a Suso, Suso can shoot and score and he does, Milan double their lead on the hour mark, it's Suso with the second and it's cool to be said again, Rafinha heavily involved, I just love that man, Rafinha has been a creative mastermind in this game as well as well as the previous game of course but Look at that, lovely bit of work. Suso turns his man brilliantly and the finish is just as good. Oh, well done by Borini. Good interception and now we can pace away from Borja Valero. Can he? Oh, yes he can. Fabio Borini loses it though. Biglia into Kessier. Kessier spots the run, has to take that first time. Hakan Chalhanoglu makes it three. I nearly ran out of breath there because that move was so perfect. I just could not stop talking. As a sub, you know, he's winning me back. Every time I've talked about Chalhanoglu, it's about him not getting played enough and actually delivering when he does. So well played, Hakan. 
I'll keep that goal in mind when I'm making up the next team sheet. Shahanoglu. Obviously oozing with a bit of confidence after that goal. It was a brilliantly taken uh, goal, by the way. And here we have another chance. It is that man, Fabio Borini. He thinks the keeper is four. Inter are being dismantled in the second half. It was respectable in the first half, but now they have absolutely capitulated. And if, it, if they're not careful, this could turn out to be a Milan versus Roma part two. Uh, three goals away from that smashing score, and I don't think we're going to get it in ten minutes. But that being said... What a finish from Barini. Again, confidence throughout the team, and that is what you need to win these games. I mean, look at the stats. Four different goal scorers. The defence is tight as a nun's ass. It's been utterly phenomenal. And a derby like this, to deliver a performance like that, is exceptional. Well done by Chalanoglu. Battles his way back into possession. Kessier now. Oh, Kessier, the footwork. Lovely. Milan, the complete performance potentially if this goes in and it does unbelievable unbelievable Andre Silva adds to his goal tally that's his second of the game Milan running rampant probably the most satisfying goal of them all the fancy passes right here to get that man in position and what a finish as well Inter they're gone mate send them back Kessie into Bonaventura who waits for Chalhanoglu could Chalhanoglu get a second here Chalhanoglu dinks Padelli. It's 6-0. What the hell is going on? I am absolutely speechless at the moment. And that is the final whistle. Milan continue on their destructive form and have now dismantled Inter only weeks after doing the same to Roma. What a performance. I mean, there are the stats. Again, same with the Roma game. It's not a 6-0 game, but we're putting in every chance we get. That's what you call being clinical. In between a few games, we have got a scouting update. Um, well, Alexandre Dufresne, is, if that's how you say it, is the only one that really looks decent in uh, that batch of players right there. We've got Mancini, of course, the Italian scout. What has he brought us back? Simone Ricci looks good. Let's sign him up, as well as Daniele Costa. Gabriele Esposito doesn't look too bad either. Let's sign him up as well. That's the scouting updates done for this month. Now a quick recap of our situation in Europa League. Uh, Milan and Guimaraes both on six points, battling it out against each other for top spots. But the main thing for us is that we have to qualify. And I don't think we're in any danger of not qualifying. So with that in mind, I'm going to use a rotational side. It will be a good test for some of these youngsters that we have put into the side, Patrick Utrone and Manuel Locatelli being two of them. Uh, Romagnoli stays in the defence, there's a couple of players in there that we want to, of course, have experience with in this team. Bonaventura, Romagnoli, Donnarumma, they all keep their place. Borini and Chalhanoglu were phenomenal against uh, Inter, so there's no reason why I shouldn't play them. Montolivo is the captain today, I know, but it's only a rotational side and it's a game. Even with a weak side, we should realistically win. Milan versus Guimaraes at the San Siro. Let's take a look at how this one pans out. A win would be ideal, a draw is good enough, a loss would be kind of unexpected, but Fabio Borini has something to say about that as he gives us the lead. 1-0 going into half-time as soon as it's 2-0. As always, I will skip the simulation and there we go. Chalhanoglu makes it 2. They bring one back. Rafinha, not our Rafinha, it's a Rafinha with a P for them, missed the penalty. Our strongest possible side has fully recovered for this mid-week game against the Genoa Romagnoli. Not 100% fit, but I'm sure he'll be able to do a job right there. Everyone is in spectacular form, apart from the back three, Donnarumma and Biglia, but they're still in good form. So again, I'm very confident we're going to pick up points in this game against Genoa. I'd rather play the away game. That's one I'd be scared of simming. But Genoa at home... Looking at the standings as well, we're making a climb up the table. I think we'll be able to do a job. Actually, if we win this game, we will be second in the league, level on points with Inter. So that's good. Andre Silva currently the top scorer in the league. Bonucci looking ready in the preview screen of the breaking news tab. I mean, everything is pointing towards a Milan win. Um, looking at Genoa's latest results, they drew to Cagliari. They won against Bologna, lost to Inter. We smashed Inter the last time round. So that being said... Let's hope for a Milan win here. Frank Yanni Kessier scores early on. Let's get a second so I can skip and save us a bit of time. It looks like we're going into the half at 1-0. We do. Carnage coming on for Suso. The substitutions scare me, but there is Bonaventura. 2-0 and it's 3-0 in the end. Bonaventura with the brace. And life like this as a manager is easy. When everything's going your way, you're picking up results without even trying. With, with simulating games, you know you're doing well. But look at the calendar. 
<laughs> what's about to hit us. It's, I'm not talking about Kievo. This is the final piece of action of today's episode, and that is, of course, play the game against Kievo away, but I'll have to rotate the side, because three days after the Kievo game, we have got Juventus coming up, who are currently unbeaten. Fantastic record. The best defence in the league. We've scored the most goals in the league, obviously, considering our last two results. So we could be one hell of a clash. If we win the game against KFO, we are technically second, a point ahead of Napoli. So that means it's first versus second against Juventus if we don't slip up against Kievo. A huge game looking... F I'm looking forward to that. And it's going to be hitting us in the next episode. Leave your prediction in the comment section down below or wait until after this KFO game. Because like I said, this game isn't won yet. We could easily make a mistake here. And let's not try and make that mistake. This is the team for the game against KFO. Rotated just like against uh, Guimaraes, I believe it was... It's the same side pretty much, most players in good form, let's get the job done. 7-0 versus Roma, 6-0 versus Inter, and this is the type of game that will probably be most dangerous to us. If we underestimate them, we're gonna be in, we're gonna be in for a tough ride. Lovely turn by Megiorini, he's straight in on goal, Donna Roma forced into a first save. Cutrone into Kalinic, lovely first touches by uh, Nikola Kalinic, and he sets free Fabio Borini. Borini for 1-0, oh what a finish, Fabio Borini is a man who cannot be tamed at the moment. Another goal for the man who was laughed at for joining Milan, but look at that, in off the bar, he's world class, dare I say it. Well played by Kalinic to set up that chance, but that first touch from Borini sets him away from the defenders, and that finish, it could have been Manuel Neuer in there, he's not saving that. Danger here for Kievo, Sebastian is through, or Bastian, not Sebastian, he scores. I'm telling you, these are the games we're going to make mistakes in, and there's the first one. Unbelievable. Chalhanoglu into Kudroni now, Kudroni into Kalinic first time. Kalinic can slip through uh, Hakan, Chalhanoglu, 2-1 Milan. Back in the lead. Brilliant finish again from Hakan Chalhanoglu, who again is in fantastic form. And I've, I really can pick whoever I want to play. There will be goals. Everyone on this team is capable of scoring, pretty much. And considering the form we're in, everything's going into the back of the net. Chalhanoglu doesn't need time to think. One touch, bang. A oh, lovely turn by Inglese. Paleta is too slow to get there, and he scores. 2 all. Just one simple turn, no cover for Romagnoli, and they're back in the game. Well done. Borini into Chalhanoglu, and it's 3-2. Hakan Chalhanoglu, that seemed to take ages for it to hit the back of the net, and I do apologise for the uh, extended uh, pronunciation of Hakan's name, but he has got his brace and put us back in front. Let's keep it that way. He's offside, surely. Megiorini is not offside. Donnarumma makes a fantastic save. Oh, Donnarumma, a good save. Eight saves to Gianluigi Donnarumma. This has been the game of redemption for him. I've criticised him in the past, but today he's performing brilliantly. Mistake. Could be punished here. Megiorini side netting. Dangerous. We're about to complete our first substitution as well. Funes Mori coming on for Patrick Cutrone. The youngster has tried his fault, but he hasn't really got what it takes yet in games like this. Could be danger in this one. There could be danger. Donnarumma spreads his legs to make another crucial save. Locatelli, looking for the switch ball into Borini. Not the best idea, probably for myself, but we do keep control of the ball. And here is Fabio Borini, who turns his man lovely, and Fabio Borini kills the game off. The pressure from Kievo was immense, but we finally get our two-goal cushion back, and I think you could safely say the three points are now in the bag. And that is the final whistle. Kievo have been beaten 4-2, by Milan, an unstoppable Milan it seems, although the defence today wasn't the best. We kept outscoring Kievo, and that is a sign of good things to come, hopefully. The goals are flying in. When Juve comes round at the San Siro next week, we have to make sure we tighten up our back line now. But I'm confident. I'm confident for that Juve game. Yes, Kievo actually battered us by the looks of things, but don't forget, this, is, this was a rotational side. Locatelli and Montolivo usually don't feature same for the back line, even though everyone's got good ratings. I felt like Bonucci and Kessia and Biglia were heavily missed today, but against Juve, they'll be there fit and ready, and Chalhanoglu and Borini impacts off the bench probably in that game as well. Both score two goals each. Phenomenal. And now that you know the result of the KFO game, I want to know your predictions in the comment section down below for the big clash between first and second. We have made an impressive climb up the table. We're four points behind Juventus, 
and we need to make sure we avoid defeat, especially at the San Siro against the U of A. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below of what will happen. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, then please leave a like down below. Again, we've been five likes short of that 200 mark. Show me you can do it. There's only a couple of you that are just literally holding us back right here. 200 likes is possible if you're looking forward to the next episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all later.